Hey guys, it's Sebastian here from Noble Fugu Studio. Toma just received a huge update and I'm super excited to show you guys all the new features in Tahoma 2D 1.1. You can read the full list of changes with the link in the description below. Today, I'm gonna to go over the updates that I find most useful, and I think many of you will think are cool and will enjoy. So first of all, there have been over 100 bug fixes since the last version of Tahoma. And before we move on to anything else, just gonna do a round of applause. That is awesome. Jeremy Bullock has really outdone himself in the work that he has put into Tahoma, and you guys are gonna see that with this update. There's just so much to talk about, and I can't wait to get into it. First of all, we have assisted drawing now works on vector levels. Now this is huge because I use vector levels professionally for line, for line art. Having the ability to use these drawing assistants, um, they're just like the ones that you can do use on raster levels. So control, which draws straight lines, also draws horizontal lines, but also in this update, it can draw lines at a 15 degree angle instead of just a 45 degree angle, which is great. It can help you be more precise. I actually use that um, in Castle Dark, but you guys will see that another time. You can also create vanishing points on vector levels. So you just hit Control Alt, just like a raster level, and then a vanishing point will appear. You can also enable vanishing point rays by heading over, you see this camera grid button, click that, click the drop down menu. This is also part of the huge update, by the way. We're gonna be com coming back here. Um, you can enable vanishing point rays. That's not the only change that came to vector levels. Vector brushes can now draw behind, they can auto close, and they can auto fill strokes. Now, I don't know if many of you know how big that is, because as an OpenTunes user, the main problem that I had was with vector levels. They're very good for line art, but in the end, I always, and I still do to this day, I always convert the vector line art layer to a raster layer for coloring. That may be over. That may be over today. This is a vector drawing in an isometric perspective. We're gonna be going over that in a second. But right here, I have this drawing of a woman with earrings, and I wanted to see if I can use the new vector brush to draw the lines and color this. So let's see what we can do. First of all, we gotta find a brush that we like though. Set the opacity for this drawing to be lower. So we have a few, a few updates here. We have draw behind, which I plan to use to fill in the eyes. Um, I'll just draw a line that will draw behind all the other vector lines, and then I'll use that to fill in, kind of like the way markers are used in OpenTunes. We have auto close, which when you draw, it'll auto close the line for you, which is great. Then we also have auto group, which comes with auto close. That was probably added to help with the coloring more because coloring on vector layers, like I said before, was not very good. I'm gonna make sure I have all those deselected for now. We're probably just gonna turn on snapping to medium. We can snap our lines to each other. All right, let's get our accuracy figured out. How do I, I think I want my accuracy to be close to 100. If I put on auto close with accuracy, we can get, yeah, it would just automatically close a line. So if we draw the eyes like, like that, it'll automatically close them, meaning we're guaranteed to have an eye that's gonna be filled in. Let's add some fill colors to see if we can fill in this hair area. Cause that looks like the thing that's already closed off. So let's see what we can do about that. Doesn't really matter what color. Wow, we already are able to do this. That's good. That's a good sign. Um, so far so good. I'm gonna add, this is what the drawing under thing is important for. I'm gonna add a, a line. Um, I'm making an, an invisible line. And we're just gonna use it so I can close off this lower body area and fill this shoulder and neck area. Let's take the alpha off of that. See what happens. So we're gonna hit draw under here. Let's see, try that again. I'm gonna make it a color for now so we can see it. Can I see that? Not yet. There we go. All right. 
now we can, that's drawn under, let's untick that, and then we can try to color in this area. I don't know guys, this is looking really, really good. So far I'm able to fill in a lot of areas that I probably wouldn't have been able to in OpenTunes. Let's see. Yeah, that's what I really like this draw under feature because it allows you to sort of define, like kind of help OpenTunes fill in things. Let's do it here too. Now there is a little bit glitchy, although um, per perhaps it's something we can do to fix that. Let's go to gap check. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to do this with this tool right here. Yeah, so I'm not sure there's much we can do about that, but let's see if we can get most of the face and most importantly the eyes. So I'm gonna tick draw under, right? And I actually forgot to tick it when I drew this line here. So that's probably why that isn't doing so well. Let's see, delete that. Oh, okay, yeah, that looks better. Not sure what we did, but it looks better. <laughs> so let's, we tap draw under, let's fill in the area where we want these eyes to be. Now you can do this with the, and already in open tunes with the use of markers. And there we go, it automatically filled in once we finished those lines. Very, very good. Now we're only gonna keep these lines, um, we're gonna keep them transparent until we're basically done coloring. Let me get, put this back on normal. Get all these areas. This is looking pretty good, guys. Some of these areas are a little wonky like this. Can't seem to get that one. And so there's still some things that are difficult to fill. There are more things we could try, like gap check. Um, we can move the lines around, see if it because sort of when we moved the lines around, it kind of fixed this issue. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of fidgeting with them can kind of help you. There we go. Oh, that that fixed that. Now let's see if we can get another win here. With this one. There we go. Now let's see if we can um, fill that with yellow. And we should be golden. Oh, we're on freehand. So I guess you might as well just keep it on normal because freehand doesn't help too much. Yeah, there we go. We are golden, guys. This one's not filling. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Let's go on gap check. There's a lot of gaps. <laughs> I think this is going to be the main one right here, though. Nice. We got it. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah, so I tried just moving around the lines, and it seems to have worked. So let's turn off gap check. Yeah, so we got all the fill areas that we wanted. Now let me make an eye color. I'll probably just make it the same as this one. Just change it. Very, very nice. I'm impressed guys. Um, just the addition of the new tools is just so nice. Having draw behind definitely helped us with filling in areas without having to use markers, which I don't think necessarily still work in open tunes, um, still work in vector levels. I mean, and we got a very decent drawing out of this. So, although when you do draw, sometimes it'll just cancel the fill on something. You can still put it back. Like I've put that one back many times. Not entirely sure why that happens. That's an issue that's still with OpenTunes though, no doubt. And seeing as good as this update was, I have confidence that soon we're gonna get a real legit vector brush engine that's gonna be totally awesome. Okay, before I get too carried away with that drawing, we gotta go over some other stuff. So the next point was they added a massive new guide and overlay system to open tune. So now you can implement rule of thirds, the Fibonacci spiral, isometric perspective grid, stuff like that. That's how I drew this sort of blocky Minecraft looking isometric view platforming section in a level. Okay, so all you gotta do is come up to this grid right here, click the grid itself and make sure that it's enabled, and then click the drop down menu. You get this huge menu with all these types of grids that you can add. So let's start with the rule of thirds. Guys, come on. I already told you guys that Tomo was great for storyboarding. Now it's perfect for storyboarding. This is awesome. Let's go back down. We got the golden ratio. So that's like the points of the Fibonacci spiral. Very nice. The regular field guide, which um, is now more useful because it fits the camera. <laughs> Before it wasn't very useful, I'll be honest. I think it was like smaller and it just didn't really help. Now we also have a horizontal grid. And this is really helpful for when you have a vanishing point present. Let me just make one real quick. Let's go to the brush tool. Yeah, when you have a vanishing point, and you can actually turn on lines for the vanishing point like we did last time. Let's um, turn them on like this, and I think I only need one for this. I also noticed that the other vanishing point was a different color, so that's very useful as well. As you can see, when you add horizontal lines, the vanishing point can create a floor, which is nice. So we have the horizontal grid, we have the vertical grid, which is just as helpful. We have a horizon, which is awesome. 
Um, yes, yeah, so you can actually, let's see how you do this. Oh, you can edit the angle. Oh, this looks so 3D. That's actually really cool. Let's see, let's set that back to zero. Offset, yeah, so let's put it up here. And now we have a true perspective grid without even trying. In the last video, I think I drew a perspective grid. I no longer have to do that. And that is just, that is just amazing, guys. The fact that this tool is available for free is amazing. All right, and then lastly, we have the isometric grid. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this vanishing point right here. Um, so we have the isometric grid, which is awesome because you can draw like blocky sort of levels, but I would combine this always with the vertical grid. That's how I got these straight lines to create this sort of, what's that, what's that game? Qbert looking level. Yeah, so definitely super awesome. What's even better, it does get even better, guys. What makes this even better is that you can now make Tahoma transparent the, to the whole Tahoma UI transparent in order to help with reference drawing. So let me go to view, toggle transparency. So I have this drawing of these rocks on a mountain. I can adjust how transparent I want Tahoma in order to draw those rocks. Like, this is awesome, guys. This is so awesome. So let's let's see. Yeah, you can still you can still do your thing. You can still draw, and <laughs> the vectors can still glitch out while Tahoma is transparent. This is this is absolutely insane. Um, Wow, like you can even, I could even trace these rocks because the program is fully usable while it's transparent. It's just, I am so thankful that this tool exists. Okay, to close off this tutorial, I wanna say a huge thank you to Jeremy Bullock for developing Tahoma and delivering us this full package completely for free that is absolutely incredible. Tahoma already got me off my feet once, but with this update, with the new added guides, the vector brushes, the addition of assisted drawing on vector levels, the ability to make Tahoma transparent really shows that Jeremy Bullock cares about this project and wants to see it through. So thank you for that. I'll leave his channel link and the link to his Patreon page in the description, guys. With that said, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.